Welcome to Contract Talk, brought to you by the Metrotex Forms and Contracts Committee. You'll hear from local experts on common errors or misconceptions about forms and contracts used in your business every day. I'm Craig Gerald with Iberia Bank Mortgage, and today we are going to talk about paragraph 12 of the contract and paragraph 4A1. And uh, in paragraph 12, uh, this covers uh, closing costs and prepaids and seller contributions toward the buyer's closing costs. The amount of the closing costs in paragraph 12 cannot exceed the actual closing costs and prepaids charged by the lender. It can only go up to 100% of the actual costs. Uh, therefore, there can be no excess money returned to the buyer. Uh, if you have $5,000 in paragraph 12 and the closing costs uh, are only and prepaids are only $4,500, that additional $500 cannot go back to the buyer as that constitutes cash back under Texas law and we cannot allow cash back to a buyer on a purchase. So therefore it's very important that you work with the lender to make sure you get an accurate count of the closing costs and the prepaids so that you can try to match up paragraph 12 as close as possible and not leave any money on the table. But the actual charges cannot exceed the cost and you cannot have an excess amount in paragraph 12. There is no need to cover uh, any of additional closing costs or prepaid uh, notations in special provisions paragraph 11 it's addressed in paragraph 12 you do not need to address it additionally in any special provision just remember closing costs and prepaids uh, can only exceed, uh, go up to 100 percent of the actual amount and there can be no refund back to the buyer Paragraph 4A1, property approval by the lender. This is a commonly misunderstood paragraph. It does not have a timeline associated with this paragraph. It is not uh, connected to the timeline in the option period, paragraph 23. Uh, that is a separate timeline. It has nothing to do with the property approval. It is also not uh, associated with the timeline as mentioned in the third party financing condition addendum. This is a totally separate approval with a separate timeline. The third party financing condition addendum specifically mentions credit approval, uh, credit income assets. It is not property approval. In fact, there's actually a separate paragraph in the third party financing condition addendum that's highlighted that says this does not pertain to paragraph 4A1. Those are two separate things, two separate timelines. Uh, the appraiser is a third party to the contract. Uh, he gets the appraisal done just as quickly as they can. The lender orders it as quick as they can but it's not subject to a timeline of the third party financing condition addendum. The credit approval and underwriting approval are not the same thing. The property approval uh, constitutes the, uh, any insurability issues, any, uh, any title issues, any property issues, appraisal issues, uh, and uh, the appraisal is a totally separate, separate timeline. And uh, the lender can uh, reject the property for the appraisal and the contract would terminate and the earnest money would be refunded. There is a limited case when the appraisal can come in low and it does not affect paragraph 4A1. Uh, in the case of a $100,000 sales price with a $100,000 appraised value and only a $60,000 loan amount, you would obviously have a 60% loan to value. If that same sales price of $100,000 and that same appraisal came in low at only say $75,000, but your loan amount was only $60,000, you would still have an 80% loan to value. Therefore, the loan would still be safe. Uh, this is, uh, happens very rarely, but it might not trigger 4A1 in that case, uh, that the appraisal would still be acceptable. But 4A1 ref refers to the property approval. This is totally separate from the credit approval, and property approval plus credit approval uh, constitutes your full underwriting approval. Uh, sometimes we have lender required repairs, that's a separate discussion. Uh, sometimes there are title or insurability issues. Uh, but uh, in most cases, it refers to the appraisal only and whether or not that appraisal is going to make the lender's requirements. <laughs> 